Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and today we're back with the Korg Op 6 and exploring the idea of building a synthesizer architecture within a synthesizer, making use of the user algorithm and the various different operator modes. So in a previous video, we took on the challenge of doing this uh, to try and replicate uh, kind of a Juno-esque uh, architecture, which worked out pretty well. Um, and if you haven't watched that video, um, I would recommend maybe going back and just watching the first third of it, perhaps, um, just because uh, I sort of explain some of the concepts, uh, uh, talk about uh, about the user algorithms in a bit more depth. I'll explain everything as I go in this video, of course, uh, but I probably won't go into depth um, in terms of how the uh, the menus work, etc., so that I'm not uh, repeating myself or anything. Building the Juno style uh, synth inside of the Op6 was an interesting challenge. And I think everyone's kind of familiar with a sort of a subtractive synth style architecture. So it's a good sort of place to start. But given all of the various different um, modes that we have on the Op6, it's maybe not the most interesting use of the user algorithm. So for today's uh, e exploration, and it will be a sonic exploration, we're going to take on the challenge of trying to build a Buckler-esque, music-easily style synth inside of the Op6. Whew, so uh, let's get down to it. So let's start by thinking about the sort of basic architecture of a Bucklery West Coast style synth. And it's kind of conceptually not that complicated and a lot of the magic happens in the uh, user interface and the various different modulation uh, aspects to it. Uh, we're not going to be able to replicate all of those, but in terms of the signal flow, uh, you've kind of got a two oscillator kind of architecture and each of those oscillators are doing a different job. So the um, I guess that the oscillator that the West Coast style synthesis is most well known for is kind of the complex oscillator. So this is an oscillator which can have multiple waveforms um, and the sort of the, the key part of the complex oscillator is that it then goes through a wave folder, which folds the wave in on itself, uh, creating all sorts of new harmonics, sort of octaves and new overtones in there. Uh, and it's a really interesting uh, way of uh, creating more harmonics rather than the sort of subtractive way of taking away uh, the harmonics. The other um, oscillator is a modulator oscillator. Again, can have multiple waveforms and of course, multiple waveforms on the Op6 is no uh, big thing. That's an easy thing for us to do. But uh, the job of this oscillator um, is that it will modulate the complex oscillator. And that can either be through FM, um, which obviously the Op6 is going to be fine with, or AM or um, uh, ring mod, uh, as we would have on the Op6. You can also hear this um, a modulator oscillator as a separate oscillator as well that you can mix into the architecture as well. So um, these two signals um, are mixed together through a low pass gate. Low pass gate is just kind of a VCA coupled with a low pass filter so that the louder sounds are brighter. And as the uh, the loudness goes down, uh, so does the, uh, the sound get darker. So bright sounds when it's loud and dark sounds when it's quiet, which is a, a lovely thing to have because... Um, that's how a lot of acoustic instruments kind of um, uh, operate. So if you think about a guitar string being plucked, it's nice and bright when you first pluck it. And as it dies down, it becomes sort of duller. So with this sort of crazy electronic uh, experimental uh, uh, architecture that's up at the front here, having the low pass gate there adds a certain acoustic quality, I think. Um, Maybe. Uh, and uh, finally, I guess a really important part of this is that uh, we go through a spring reverb because, you know, you got to go through a spring reverb. Uh, we've got an effects section on the Op6, so that's not going to be a problem either. In terms of uh, modulation, um, there are kind of three main sources on the music easel, and we can uh, do a, pr a good job of two of them, and we'll have to sort of fake it with the, with the third one. We'll go backwards here. Five-step sequencer. Uh, that's a uh, control voltage sequencer. So that could be used for pitch, but it could also be used for any other modulatable um, parameter on the device. So whether it's the waveform amount or uh, you know uh, the uh, the FM amount or whatever it happens to be, um, that's uh, easily done on the Op6. We have our sequencer and we have the um, motion um, lanes, which we can actually just sort of lock 
uh, as if they were just a, a step sequencer. That's easy peasy. Um, the random voltages, you know, randomness is a big part of um, the vibe, I think, on these sorts of synths. Again, this is easy for us to do. Uh, the LFO on the OP6 is fully featured, has a number of different random uh, settings, both stepped and slewed. Uh, so that's uh, uh, easy and we can experiment with different um, types of random uh, sources as well, which is good. And the final one is the cycling envelope. So this is an attack decay envelope, optionally with a hold, uh, which we can kind of fake up with a, um, a standard envelope. But the important thing, I guess, about the cycling envelope is that it can loop as if it was an LFO. And then a big part of the vibe, especially with the sort of the self-generating um, patches, is that you can then independently modulate the attack and decay. That's going to be tricky. Um, so um, we're probably going to have to fake that and make do with an LFO, I think, um, rather than have any sort of cycling envelope. But um, perhaps in the future, Korg, in a firmware update, if you wanted to add cycling features to the envelopes on the OP6, I certainly wouldn't complain. I think that would be a really interesting addition to the whole setup. Right, so let's think about how this relates to the uh, user algorithms and uh, and the various different operator modes. So as a little peek behind the curtain, uh, this was my first draft. Um, this is my second time trying to record this video. And this, um, I actually started making a video based on this idea. Um, and I'll explain what this idea is because it almost works, but there's a fatal flaw with it, which I'll also explain. Uh, so um, I was guessing we were just four operators here. Operator one was going to be the modulator oscillator. Uh, operator two was going to be the complex oscillator, but without the wave folder. Operator three was going to be the wave folder itself. And then operator four was going to act as a low pass gate. So what we had was our modulator uh, operator up here. Uh, this was being sent down into the low pass gate, uh, which was operator four. Uh, but then it was also being fed into operator two, which is the complex oscillator. And depending on the mode of the complex oscillator, whether it was set to FM or ring, that would give us FM or um, amplitude modulations. So that gave us both of our options here. Uh, that would then be fed down into operator three, which was in wave folder mode, but with its oscillator mix turned all the way down. So it wasn't contributing any sound itself. It was just processing what was coming in from above. And then that uh, wave folder output would go into operator four, which would be acting as the low pass gate. Now, that almost looks like it works if you think about it in this situation. But the problem is with this layout. If I want to hear the modulator oscillator, I'm going to have to turn it up, obviously. And that's going to send it into operator four, which is great. But it's also going to be sending it into operator two. So if I want to hear the modulator uh, oscillator, I've got to be applying it to the complex oscillator, which is not always going to be what you want to do. You might want to have those two things happening independently of each other. And similarly, if I want to um, uh, uh, add some FM or AM to the complex oscillator, that means I'm also going to be hearing the output of the modulator because I'm going to turn it up, same thing, same problem, but in reverse. Uh, and that removes some of the flexibility of this setup. So this is my first draft. I started making a video on it. I got about 30 minutes into the video and then I went, oh no, this doesn't actually work. That's so much for the best laid plans. So what's the rule if something in synthesis isn't working the way you want it to work? The, the, uh, the answer to the problem is always add more VCAs. So uh, this is uh, my, my hopefully final uh, draft of what I'm going to be doing here. And it's mostly the same. Uh, operator one is still the mod, mod oscillator. Um, we've got four here now being as the complex oscillator, the wave folder and low pass gate. That's, that bit there is all the same. What's different now is what is sat in between our mod oscillator and the various, um, its various outputs. So what I've done here instead is that I have added an operator here, operator two, which I'm calling the mod osc output level. Uh, and this is just going to be a filter, uh, operator with its uh, oscillator mix turned all the way down and it's going to be in a fixed mode with the filter wide open or actually uh, a better way of doing it it will be a high pass filter with it open the other way i guess um, but that basically allows us to have uh, a level control independent of the level 
that we set this one at. Essentially, it's acting as a VCA. Uh, and similarly here, uh, operator three is going to be doing exactly the same job, but it's going to be like the gatekeeper uh, for the FM, uh, sorry, the uh, modulator oscillator going into the complex oscillator. So again, that means I can turn up operator two and here our mod oscillator without having to uh, modulate the complex oscillator. And similarly, I can have uh, this one turned down and uh, operator three turned up. And that means I'll get the modulation happening, but not here, the oscillator. And then I can do those two things independently so that we can have things fade between each other and all sorts of things. Much more flexible, slightly more complex in terms of it's got more operators, but still only two stems essentially. Um, and like I say, the rule is more VCAs is always more better. So here's more VCAs essentially and it's better. So uh, we're on the Algo Home page, and if we're going to be building our synthesizer architecture, we're gonna to want to turn it all the way over to the end to user. Currently no user architecture set up, so no sound, because nothing is set as an output. And then we can go into the miscellaneous menu, come down to the user algorithm, hit yes, and we're at the uh, page for allowing us to build our architecture. Let's just grab the uh, diagram again we can work from this so the first thing that we're going to want to do is set our outputs there is only one output in the design here which is operator six so we'll come on to page two here and we'll turn operator six as to be a direct out turns red and now we have uh, operator six acting as a direct out uh, and now we can build the rest of this architecture. It's probably easiest to work backwards. So let's go to operator six first. Uh, what is feeding into operator six? Well, operator two is, so we can turn up two to six. And so is operator five, so we'll turn up five to six. There we go. Go back to operator five. The only thing that's going into operator five is operator four. So we can turn up four to five. Uh, go up to operator four. The only thing going into that is operator three. So we can turn up um, three to four. Uh, up again to operator three, and the only thing going into that is one, so we can turn up one to three. Uh, operator two, uh, only one thing feeding into that, which is operator one, so we turn up one to two, and then there's nothing uh, going into operator one. So that is kind of the layout of uh, the operators, but now we need to set up their various different modes. Right, okay, so we'll go over to the mode page for on operator one. Operator one is our modulator oscillator. We're just gonna leave this in FM mode. Um, it could be a couple of different modes, but FM mode is easy enough. And um, we'll set the waveform maybe to a triangle to begin with, but we might play with uh, squares in particular. So sound pretty good, I think, uh, in this setup. So we might play with that as well. Uh, operator two, let's go down. Operator two is our output level for the uh, modulator oscillator. So we're gonna set this on to filter mode like that. Um, we're gonna turn the oscillator mix all the way down because we don't want this oscillator or operator, I should say, to make any noise itself. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to switch its type to high pass filter. And then we're going to come into the pitch. We're gonna set it to fixed. And we're going to set the high pass filter as low as it will go, which basically it means it's not filtering anything. So anything above 0.01 hertz is being let through, which is basically everything spot on that's just acting as a VCA now. Uh, operator three is doing the same thing, same job, but uh, in a different position. So we'll do exactly the same thing there. We will set that to filter. We'll set it to high pass. Oscillator mix all the way down, come into the pitch page, set it to fixed and bring the cutoff all the way down, which should just be letting everything through. Uh, next operator is operator four, which is going to be our complex oscillator, but not the wavefold part of it. Um, this can be set to FM because, um, or, or we can set it to ring as well, but we'll start with FM. Uh, we'll set its wave shape to triangle, and uh, that should be all that we really need to do with that for now, I think. Good, right, operator five is next, which is gonna be our wave folder. So operator five into the mode, uh, we want that to be set to wave folder. We want to turn the oscillator mix all the way down because we don't want it to be contributing its own sound, we just want it to be uh, folding the complex oscillator that's coming into it. That's all good. 
And then finally, operator six is going to be our low pass gate. So that's a filter and a VCA at the same time. And so I am going to change that to the filter mode. We don't want it to be contributing of its own sound again. So we'll turn that all the way down. Low pass filter is right. We might play with the different modes. Actually, do you know what? I just, I just like the sound of the um, MG ones. So let's set it to MG low pass filter 12 for the moment. Uh, and the other thing that we're going to want to do is uh, switch its pitch to fixed. So by default, the uh, if, if you haven't um, explored the filter mode, then if you watch my operator modes video, I kind of go into depth with this. Uh, but by default, the filter will track the keyboard uh, when it's in ratio mode. But if we set it to fixed, it will be fixed. And now we have just a, a control over the cutoff uh, with the pitch of this uh, operator. So if this all works, um, just for testing, I should be able to turn up operator one. Well, let's turn up our output first. So that's our output. We shouldn't hear anything because that operator isn't contributing anything. If we turn up operator one, we still shouldn't hear anything because we haven't opened up our um, VCA. But if we turn up operator two, we get sound. That is working. Um, let's just double check uh, the rest of the architecture here. So. Uh, if I turn on operator two, everything goes away. If I turn up operator four, I shouldn't hear anything because we need to turn up the wave folder, which we do. And if I turn up operator three, which is our FM AM amount, we should hear operator four gets modulated more. By Jove, I think he's got it. Um, that is sort of the basic setup. We're going to have to do some hacks to make this sort of work. Um, more generally. So let's um, hack, shall we? So the big thing when you're trying to build patches like this, and we had to do the same thing on the Juno style patch as well, is that we want our oscillators, oscillators to be free running essentially and uh, allow other aspects within our architecture, which are acting as VCAs or filters to be um, uh, adjusting the free running volume of those. Uh, oscillators. Now we can't have free running oscillators. There's no drone mode on the OP6. More's the pity. Again, Korg, if you're listening in a future firmware update, if you wanted to add a drone mode to the level on any of the uh, operators that would be um, welcomed, I would welcome that. Um, so please do that for me. Um, but basically all of these um, oscillators operators here need to act like they are always running. Now we can't quite do that, but we can approximate it near as damn it by just having a very, very long level um, envelope. Now uh, we're always going to want operator one and operator four turned up on here anyway, because they are our actual operators that are running, but the same thing is going to apply for two, all of them. So if we come into the level here and what we want to do is turn the sustain up to full, we want to turn our release as long as it will go and it goes very, very long, goes 90 seconds. So that's, that's good. And then we want to turn our curve down to linear because that gives us the gentlest um, descent at the start of the release. So that gives us uh, the, the most drone like sound basically. And we want to apply that to all of the different uh, operators apart from operator six, which will do something slightly different with. Um, so uh, if we just go through all of these, you can actually just copy these across um, using the operator menu, but honestly, uh, for something that's not very complex, like what I'm doing here, it's probably just quicker to go through them all and do it manually uh, instead. Uh, that's four and this is five. There we go. Cool and linear. Uh, and then for um, operator six, um, what we're going to want to do is uh, set this as a sort of a gate uh, signal instead because we're going to actually be uh, modulating this with something else so we just want it to play as long as uh, a note is held down so for operator six what we'll do is we're going to full sustain uh, we will have release almost instant but just get rid of that little click at the end. And uh, that's a very boring sounding boucle at the moment, but we'll 
I get things sounding a little bit crazier very, very soon. But before we do, I think it is important for us to have the spring reverb in place because it's going to make everything sound vibier at all times. So let's do that, shall we? So let's come into our effects here. I'm not going to put it as the last effects. I might want to add like a uh, like a delay or a reverb on afterwards, I think. But in the middle effect, I'm going to set this to our spring reverb. Uh, the controls here of the spring reverb are, are nice. Uh, length is not the length of the um, decay of the reverb. Instead, it's the length of the spring. So if you set this longer, you've got a much longer spring, which means that you kind of get discrete echoes. Whereas shorter, it's splashier and more reverby. Something like that will do. Everything's very mellow at the moment, but uh, it will get less mellow as we start to um, explore, I think. So in terms of the patch that we're going to build with this architecture, let's go for something sort of generative, Krell, sort of crazy sci-fi 60s B-movie kind of soundtrack thing because it's a cliche thing to do with this kind of architecture, but it is fun. And you can create more conventional sounds as well if you like, but there are enough conventional sounds in the world, so let's make something a bit weirder, shall we? So let's just um, let's just get a, a basic sound here, which is a little bit more harmonically rich, just so that we can start to feel what we're working with here. So let's um, turn up operator three, so we're applying some modulation here, and maybe on operator uh, five, which is our wave folder, we can. Add a little bit of wave folding as well. Uh, and we'll have all these things moving in and out um, shortly. But um, let's talk about, if we come back to wherever I've put it, the uh, cycling uh, envelope. And we'll have the cycling envelope modulating our low pass gate. So rather than, which is why I've set it to a gate. Um, type signal on operator six, we're gonna have something else modulating it instead. And that's going to be uh, our cycling envelope or to put it another way, it's gonna be a, an LFO, sadly. Um, nothing more interesting than that. Um, but we will modulate the speed of the LFO, which will make it more interesting. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come into the mod here and we'll use, I guess, a LFO one as our LFO. Um, let's just speed down a little bit for the moment. Um, we'll stick with a triangle uh, there's also an exponential triangle, which is quite nice. We can try other wave shapes, but triangle is as good as anything else. I think the other thing that we'll do here, and we'll do this for all of our LFOs and random sources and all that kind of things. We'll set its key sync to voice rather than, um, common, which means that it will restart for each voice. Uh, that means that each voice is going to be, if we play polyphonically, which is a benefit of building this architecture on the op six, rather than actually having a monophonic um, music easel it means that each of these lfos are going to be operating independently and if we spoiler alert modulate the time of them with a random lfo that random lfo is also going to be running independently which means that all of these different voices are going to be whomping in and out differently so we've got a triangle um uh, LFO there and we're going to patch it into op6 and we're going to patch it into both op6's level and its pitch because of course on a filter on a fixed filter the pitch is uh, also the cutoff filter and that will allow us to approximate that low pass gate feel where it gets brighter as it gets louder so we'll come into the v patch and we'll set our source to be uh, the first LFO and the destination is going to be operator six and it's going to be operator six's level. We'll turn that up almost to full, but not all the way to full. And now we have operator six whomping in and out with its uh, volume. And then on the next one here, we'll do exactly the same thing, uh, LFO one, but this time the destination is going to be op sixes pitch which is going to be the filter cutoff you can hear that, that all of those are 
Whomping in and out independently. And we can change the overall brightness of our output just by changing the um, frequency of op 6. Essentially, uh, uh, adjusting the bias of where the, the filter has been held open. Okay, so that is a start. I think I'm going to make that uh, go a little slower to begin with. Uh, but if we're making kind of like a generative Corel patch, we're going to want to introduce a source of randomness as well. Uh, and uh, let's do that right now so that we can start to get our um, low pass gate our cycling envelope moving at different rates make it a little bit more interesting so uh, next page we'll go to uh, LFO2 we'll set the key sync to voice and we've got a couple of different um, random uh, modes here so we've got sample and hold which is like a pure uh, noise backed sample and hold so it's kind of jumping to random voltages at uh, a fixed rate that rate is controlled by the speed and that's probably true to form for the architecture, but there's actually a mode that I really like for generative patches um, even more than that, which is the uh, blah, 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 stepped random level and time. And uh, what this basically gives us is a uh, random voltage source, random LFO, which is jumping around randomly stepped like the sample and hold but it's holding itself for different amounts of time which makes for more interesting interplay between things um, so we're going to go for that one there got it set to voice and the first destination we're going to send it in our v patch is going to be the speed of our first lfo which is going to start to give us that kind of uh, generative uh, whoops sources lfo2 i should say and the destination is lfo1's speed And we kind of start to get start to get that Krell feel uh, pretty quickly as soon as we start to do that. So um, I think at this point we want to start applying some of these um, uh, sources, uh, both the random source and the cycling envelope, to some of the other places within our architecture. So um, I think probably uh, a good one would be to send one of them to the FM amount. So that's um, if we come back to our map not that one too many pieces of paper here. If we come back to our map here uh, we can apply one of them to our fm am amount here uh probably uh we'll try the stepped random perhaps for that one uh, and then we can also apply another one to the wave folder to get some interesting interplay happening there as well so let's uh do that so um let's go to the next one along source LFO2, which is our random source, we're going to send it to operator 3, which is this chap here, which is the FM amount, essentially send that to the level, and we'll see how that sounds. So immediately we start to get these more interesting... tweets happening in there more pure sound for the slow attacks which works really nicely cool and of course changing the uh, ratio or frequency of operator one is going to give us different feels in there as well so we'll definitely do something with that in a moment uh, so then we'll also have our cycling envelope, which is LFO1, and we'll send that to um, OP5's wave fold um, again. So in our map again, uh, operator 5 is our wave folder, so we'll put that into the gain there, see how that sounds. Perhaps we can invert it even. Uh, 
Yeah, it's doing some interesting things. Quack, 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 quack. Here, each time I play a note, it's going to give us a different feel. Uh, let's just come around to uh, here and just turn that down to zero to begin with. Let's maybe just also mess with the bias a little bit. Give us some different feels. Cool. And if I play two notes, um, they're going to be doing um, different patterns. They're all quacking at different times. I'm not sure about that wave folder. Uh, perhaps I will. Um, perhaps I'll modulate that with something else. I don't like the way that sounds on the on the slower ones. So we'll turn that down for the moment. I think. Um, and then we'll just turn the actual gain up a bit. Try that with some low notes. <laughs> yeah. Cool stuff, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so the next uh, modulation, uh, not that one, God, too many pieces of paper back here. The next modulation source, final modulation source that we would need to talk about is the uh, five step sequencer. So for this, we'll just use the um, the sequencer on the up six, uh, but we'll, we'll uh, set up the motion controls to work in a particular way to give it a stepped motion. We'll start by coming into the sequencer menu here. Um, we're going to drop the tempo because that's going to be too fast. Um, we'll, we'll try 40, but we'll we'll play about with what we've got here. Um, a real shame of the V-patch system on this is that there's no way to modulate the speed of the sequencer. I think that would be such a cool location. Uh, you can uh, change the resolution of the arpeggiator in the in the patch. You can have that be modulated by an LFO, which is a really, really cool effect. So it's a real shame you can't do it for the sequencer yet in this firmware version Cork. if you are watching that's feature request number three i think so feel free to add that one for me as well um as if i have that kind of power uh, <laughs> please um uh, i guess the main thing here is if we're going to keep this true to form in terms of the uh, music keys we're going to want to change our length down to just five uh, and we are going to want to keep key trig off it might seem that it'd be interesting to have the single start each time you play a note, but it functionally makes the patch monophonic or at least fixed pitches because you have to um, put notes across the sequence to make that work uh, and let any sound through. So I'll leave key trick off and just have it playing as we are going. So if we want to turn this into like a five-step CV stepped sequencer, we're going to want to come into uh, not the sequencer note, but rather the emotion controls here for each of these five steps. Um, now we have six lanes of modulation here, so we can route this in quite interesting ways, um, which is a really, really nice thing. We'll try one or two different destinations and, and see how they sound perhaps. But the important thing that we're going to want to do in order to um, get this to work as a step sequencer is for every single um, step we're going to want to turn the curve which is this um, parameter here to step which means that it's not going to slew between the various different notes because otherwise you can have exponential linear and indeed logarithmic slewing between um, steps which is a really nice feature to have for some patches not for this one so we want that on step uh, we're gonna have to do this um, for each um, uh, step and each lane but we'll we'll do each lane as we go across um we'll just do it for the first lane now as we start setting things up i think so uh, if we now play the sequencer uh, then nothing's happening because um we haven't really done anything with our sequencer yet so what can we do with our sequencer i think the first thing we should try is maybe the wave folder because that didn't feel right uh to have that on the cycling envelope so perhaps having that stepped rather than um uh, rather than uh jumping about everywhere that might be um sort of uh better uh so in terms of what we're going to be doing here we're going to be looking at operator five and the wave folder either the wave folder gain or the bias 
else. Either of those will have a harmonic change. Let's try gain for the moment. So uh, destination, we're going to set to operator five. I'll just stop the sequence because otherwise you can't see the bottom here, which is a bit annoying. Um, like I, I, I kind of understand why it's done that way, but still. Uh, and we're going to set that to the somewhere over here. Where are we? Folder gain. There we are. Uh, so now we can hear that that folder gain has been turned up quite a bit, so we're getting that richest kind of sound. But for each of these notes now we can set different levels. Maybe we'll have this sequence running a bit faster, uh, or a different resolution perhaps. So that's with the, um, let's try it with the bias instead. Yeah, I think I prefer that subtler. Alternatively, we could go back to the game, but make everything lower perhaps be less um oops be less extreme for everything yeah let's try that instead um so That's uh, one thing we can try there. I think another thing that will make this a more interesting patch, uh, perhaps, would be to look at our modulator here and maybe have the pitch be um, modulated by that. And we can do that either by uh, switching this to fixed mode and actually just kind of sequence it as if it was a pitch sequencer, uh, or we can just uh, play with the ratios. Um, I think we might just try the ratios for now. I might be wrong, we can try other things, but let's try that. So we'll set all these to step again. And like that. As so a destination for our modulator is going to be up one, and we're going to set that to, we could just do a pitch. Mm. Oh, let's actually, let's try, tran no, let's do it with pitch. Let's actually let's actually sequence the pitch on it. I think uh, so. I think some of the really low ones sound really good. See, now I want this to, pick, this to be going slower as well. And maybe we can set this to random as well. Try a high note. Perhaps we can hear that operator as well. Slow all of those modulations down a little bit. But make the effect of the random on the LFO speed more pronounced. because I want some of those helicopter sounds there. We could 
also change the um, wave shape perhaps of our modulator oscillator. Try a, a square instead. Keep that as a triangle, but change the complex oscillator to be a sawtooth, perhaps. Let's try that. And another one, four. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I told you we were going to be doing sci fi sounds. Oh, there's a sci fi fart. Let's also on our uh, uh, wave folder, let's bring the bias down and the gain down a bit. Oh, so the gain's been sequenced, isn't it? Okay, so we've got a basic patch going on here um, that's kept fairly true to the architecture as far as possible uh, on, with what we've got to work with. But we've got an extra LFO here and we've got some more effects. So let's, let's do some things with those things. Uh, I think the first thing to do um, is I think we want to set up a third LFO here also to be doing the uh, stepped maybe just the slewed random. So there's the random level in time, which is going to give us slewed random instead. We'll set that to voice. So it's per voice again, set it fairly slow. And I think what I'd like to do is patch that to the panning because I just love stereo movement in patches like this. So we'll go to a spare slot in the V patch. Uh, source will be our new random source there. Our destination will be program pan. And remember that the program uh, settings here are per voice if the LFO is per voice so we can get panning per voice here we'll set this fairly wide so now we should have pretty wild or too wild panning there should we try the uh sorry to jump around should we try um ring mod instead on the um, complex as well let's try that Give that a go for a while. It's a bit, bit more mellow, isn't it? So um, let's also add in some more effects because we can. I think what I'd like to do is put a tape delay at the end. And then what we can actually do... No, what we must do is let's, let's uh, modulate the delay time with one of our random sources. Let's use LFO2. This is a requirement by law. Uh, so we'll send that to FX3 delay and we'll set that to the delay time just a little bit. We'll get those sweet tape delay sounds. as it slows down and speeds up. And if you don't like that sound, then it's against the law and you have to darken it a bit. Do some higher notes. <laughs> 
I think maybe we want to come into the V patch and just reduce how much of operator 3 we're getting. So reduce the amount of modulation a little bit. And maybe while we're here, let's have our other random source, our new one, our extra one, turn operator 2 up and down, which will give us different amounts of our modulation oscillator in the output. And while we're here, <laughs> let's also have LFO2 modulate the level of our spring reverb. space now. We do still also... of course have another FX left over. What could we do with it? I think maybe we could stick some phaser on it? Or distort it a little bit, perhaps that'd be good. Yeah, sometimes a bit of distortion is nice, let's try the low notes. And mix that in with a high note. with a middly note. And now we are very much in space. And I think an interesting thing to do with this patch as well is in the sequencers to change the resolution. it pings about a bit more so it is absolutely refusing to ping about oh there we go and depending on what you've put in your sequencer of course this could be doing all sorts of interesting things and then changing the speed of it gives you quite dramatic changes to the patches Anyway, I'm probably just going to sit here and play with this for another hour. Because I find this stuff fun. And synthesis is fun. And it should be fun. But uh, in terms of the video, I think we'll call it a day there. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, found it interesting and weird. I hope you found it weird. Because sometimes that's what we need in synthesis. We need some weird sounds. If you did enjoy the video, found it useful, then as always, if you could find the time to give the video a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That's always hugely appreciated. Hello there. Hope everyone is doing okay 
in these times that continue to be very weird and occasionally quite difficult. Until next time, take care of yourselves. And I will see you in space very soon.